Welcome back to day two. For some of us that have been here a week, it feels like a long time, but for those of you who have only been here a couple days, it's great. We're hoping to really maintain this feeling of design and thinking about how design impacts learning throughout everything we do in our learning environments. Uh, we have a lot of great things going on today. It's the last day of the summit. We're gonna end today, actually. I don't know if people have looked ahead in the schedule. We're gonna end today with a little tradition. As we started out with 20 people some years ago, we had David Rose come up, who was kind of one of the founders of this whole thing. He's written a few things on it. I don't know if you've heard about this man before. We've had David, <laughs> he's back there waving. We've had David uh, in the past do a fireside chat with us on kind of lessons learned throughout, throughout the summit and kind of what's new and what is he thinking about. David's gonna come up and it's changed throughout the years because it's, as it's gotten larger, we actually don't have a real fireplace anymore, this sort of thing, right? So his fireside chats are no longer truly fireside chats, they're more of a virtual chat. Uh, with, we try and integrate a fire to it, but David's back there, he's gonna come up and join us here at the end of the day. So if, uh, if you have a, a flight scheduled or whatever, it's by far uh, worth changing your flight. by far uh, worth changing your flight to come see him do his fireside chat just to one to get him a little bit nervous but um, so anyhow uh, again welcome back I want to kind of do some a little bit of housekeeping we're gonna have a little bit of housekeeping here this morning uh, some great announcements and some exciting things that we want to share with you that we've kind of been keeping in our back pocket uh, just so that uh, we can save it for the last day but then before we do that I want to do something very, very important, which is thank our sponsors. Um, we, we, one of our goals at the IRN is to keep, is to keep uh, our conferences and our gatherings affordable, right? That's something that we're really focused on, is trying to keep them affordable. And the only way we can do that is through great sponsorship. We shared with you yesterday the work that David Davies and his crew have done in supporting the conference center and helping us, and helping us come to Florida. We've also, we have also had great sponsorship uh, through Don Johnston, Text Help, and CAST, uh, Professional Learning. Uh, these, these folks are the people that have supported you, really, in the pricing that you received to come to the, to the summit, and we hope to increase this, uh, the number of sponsors that we receive, so that we can continue to have the same pricing. Because as we grow, it gets more and more expensive. So we really appreciate, we really appreciate our sponsors. So we can give them a hand of applause if we could, please. <clears throat> All right, without further ado, I'm, we're good back there with AV. We had some last minute changes where we have something super special coming up in a few minutes. And so with that said, uh, I'm gonna call up Brian Dean. Hey, good morning, y'all. Hey, so um, this morning something interesting happened. Um, I was in my room uh, fast asleep and uh, there was this huge honking outside my door. And so I went and I, I opened up the door and right there uh, waiting for me to, to come back to the summit was a struggle bus. Anybody else catch the struggle bus on the way today? There's, there's some people like, yeah, no, I know that feeling, yeah. <laughs> there's some people, that I, see, I see a couple of you, both your hands are full, it's hard to type because you, you double fist in the coffee. How many people are doing that this morning? Yeah. <laughs> How did yesterday go, folks? <laughs> yep. See, that just confirms the struggle bus, baby, because everybody's like, woo, yep, right? We got another great day planned for you, but I want to show you this today. Um, uh, something interesting happened last night. There's, uh, that's not me. Um, so where's the, where's the crew that took this picture? Where's the New Hampshire crew? Right? Yeah. So they were out. They saw this dude, and they're like, hey, that suit looks familiar. <clears throat> I guess it's fairly recognizable. I don't know. Um, and they said, hey, can we get a picture with you? And so they took a picture with him. And they said, hey, where are you from? And he goes, I'm from Detroit. That's where I'm from. <laughs> so there must be something about Florida that, that uh, gets us all, all, all of us in Detroit really excited uh, to put on our flamingo suits. We don't always dress this way. 
Um, but I didn't know we were handing out his uniform. So there you go, y'all. <laughs> uh, I just want to tell you again that uh, the, the uh, Crusader game is live and it's still going. Uh, I just checked the leaderboard. Some of you were, some of you were doing some stuff last night. I saw you. Um, so the positions are changing. You can always check out the leaderboard. The game table is out there. We will be announcing the list of prizes very soon. Um, uh, so you're going to want to be around for those. So we have that. And I think, uh, yes, please, we still have posters out there, folks. We don't have very many left, but we have some. Um, we still have some lapel pins. So we've, uh, we're at uh, $5. Uh, and then uh, you can go ahead and pick one of these up. And uh, you, know, you hang it in your UDL uh, lair, if you want, your UDL bat person cave, I guess. I don't know, wherever you want to put it. It's good for friends and family, too. So you want to show up? You want to bring the kids something? And be like, hey, here you go. It's for everyone, right? It says it right there, folks. It's for everyone. And they fit in the carry-on. Uh, so without folding them, you just have to roll them up. All right, so I think that's, uh, that's everything I have. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Sign up at the UDL, UDL IRN table. See, right? I told you I'm on the struggle bus. <laughs> Sign up at the UDL IRN table in the networking hall. Uh, be a beta tester for the new platform late fall uh, or contribute to the UDL resources to the platform. Um, this is, uh, is going to be really, really big, and, and we're gonna, you'll get more information out there in the networking hall. Uh, but if you want a place where you can go and, and get some really great resources, uh, vetted resources, this is going to be it. It's going to be the game changer. So. Um, I think that's uh, all I have, and with that, I want to pull up uh, Jamie and Skip again. So we just do this thing where we just get back up and down. So here you go, folks. Thank you, sir. I always feel like underdressed when I come up after Brian. I don't know what it is. I'm going to have to go to his new clothing store. All right, so... When the IRN came about, one of the things that we were concerned about, and uh, we, we brought it to the field, was the idea that implementation is starting to take place, and yet we don't know what it actually looks like and feels like, and how do we actually scale implementation? So some years ago, we brought this conversation up to CAST, our friends here, and you know, we just weren't ready to really do anything with it. We really didn't know what to do with it, but we just knew we had an issue. So that we would go into some classrooms and they would say, hey, look, we're implementing UDL. And essentially all they're doing is using an interactive whiteboard. We'd go to other classrooms and they would say, hey, we're, we're implementing UDL. And it would be a transformative space where it's really designed for all learners. And there was a difference between those two things. And we needed to figure out a way to somehow recognize the difference between the two things, as well as to recognize the need to get more people to develop these transformative spaces. So about two years ago, the team at the IRN started thinking about a little bit more about what would this mean to the field if we were to th develop and, and somewhat get this into process, right? Where we could think about what would a credential look like for a person that was actually uh, had the understanding of how to develop that transformative space. And then what would a cert certification look like for a building that says we are a UDL based building or we are a UDL based district. And in having that conversation, we had it with multiple other nonprofits like ours to, 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 to say, you know, how are you dealing with this in the spaces that you're working in? So we talked to places like Digital Promise, we talked to uh, other, other groups that are doing this sort of work. And what we came away with was there was a field that was very active in this space, but they were outside of the venue of education in some forms. And it's the USGBC. Anyone heard of the USGBC? A few people. Anyone heard of a LEED certification? Green building certification? So here's what's interesting about Here's what's interesting about this group. About a decade ago, or even two decades ago, a bunch of small nonprofits got together to think about designing and implementing sustainable living environments. And, and, and they kind of came together under this sort of umbrella, this canopy, 
called USGBC, and then developed something called a LEED certification. And they developed this LEED certification for buildings to kind of say, hey, look, we've thought about the environment when we've built our building, and we want to be recognized for that. Not because we have to, but because we think it's important to who we are as a group, right? And not only did we do this, but we employed people in that process that kind of knew what they were doing in building these buildings, right? So they were careful in how they designed it as well as how they were working on it. And we said, wow, this is amazing, right? This is absolutely amazing. And then they told us, we spent about $100 million to develop a system and platform for doing this work. And I didn't happen to have $100 million lying around. And my wife said we couldn't put it on the credit card. Smart. Yeah. So we continued the conversation. And through uh, one of our board members, Denise DeCoast, and her relationship with her daughter, who was on, a, on the team at USGBC, we got to have continued conversation around this. And USGBC and the LEED platform are known to be like the, the Cadillac globally of this sort of certification and credentialing sort of system. And through this continued conversation, they said, we believe, we believe in what you believe, that we want to transform education and help you with that process. So if we helped you with that process, would you come together with other partners and think about how we can help support transforming education just like we did that green building space? And we said, yeah, we would love to have that conversation. So we went to our friends at CAST. Went to our friends at CAST, who then went to another group. And we started this conversation about a year and a half ago then with CAST to think about what would it look like if we develop credentials for individuals that under, truly understand UDL, that truly understand what it means and how to operationalize it in a physical space, a digital space, and in a district setting, et cetera. And then what would it mean for a building or a district or a product or a certification to have a certification that says, we truly understand it, we believe in it, and we are implementing it in the things that we do. So we came to these folks, and I'm going to hand it to Skip here, and we're going to talk more about it. But here's what we're going to announce to you today, is that this is coming together through a, through a partnership of CAST, the IRN, and the UDL National Task Force, which I don't know if people know what that is, but it's, Skip will do it, because he's a policy guy, and that's kind of what they do. Um, but we have some exciting news for you, and it's, we have something that's kind of rolling out uh, behind the scenes. Skip. Good morning. Um, so as Jamie said, uh, there's a, I'm sorry? Okay, great. There's a, a growing demand uh, and growing expectations related to universal design for learning. So uh, the IRN approached CAST and said, we need to do something about this. We agreed. We also reached out, as Jamie mentioned, to the National Task Force on Universal Design for Learning. That's a policy organization located in Washington represents roughly 40 organizations, many of them general education, also disability advocacy organizations. That group has been responsible for getting the definition of universal design for learning into the Higher Education Act in 2008 and getting references into the Every Student Succeeds Act 2015. So uh, Ricky Sabia, who's over here, and Debbie Taub, who's somewhere in the room, uh, are folks that have been working with us to kind of uh, galvanize and grab onto this moment to make things move forward. So when uh, Jamie came to us and the IRN folks and said, let's pull this thing together, we have an idea for a platform, which Jamie will talk about in a little detail, I said, we also need a mandate. We need a national mandate from movers and shakers in the educational community to sign on to this from the very beginning. So we put together a preliminary uh, UDL council. And the purpose of this, and I'll just read this to you, to develop a UDL credentialing and certification process 
to recognize best practices in education program design, product development, and classroom instruction. And the tagline underneath is inclusive, transparent, collaborative, voluntary, and verifiable. So this is an incentive-based system that we have envisioned, not a compliance-based system. And we reached out to a number of partners that currently have agreed to join the UDL Council. We've had a couple of meetings in the fall. This is a phase one process that we hope will grow, become increasingly more inclusive. But this is just a kind of representative sampling of the organizations and entities that have signed on, uh, provided essentially unanimous support for this effort moving forward. Uh, so this is a major step uh, in the right direction, we think. We're currently in phase one through the end of this uh, calendar year with the hopes of really moving things forward uh, pretty aggressively. At the moment, we have uh, a mandate from the council to develop two different certifications. One uh, baseline certification structure for ed tech products and a second baseline certification process for school districts. And then we're also simultaneously working on establishing what we're referring to as a UDL core credential for individuals. Now to house this and to scale it, I was out there looking at the map earlier today of people, and if you've not gone out and put a pin where you live or your home, I was out there looking at the map today and we have 14 different countries that are represented in this room. 14 different countries, right? We're not seeing growth in UDL just in the US. We're seeing growth globally in UDL. So we need to develop a way, not to just think about this domestically, but we need to think about UDL, credentialing and certification globally. And so to do this in a partnership with USGBC and the work that they're doing in kind for us in the development, as well as our friends at CAST, we're, we're moving forward on the development of a platform-based system, an online system that will house the credentials, will, will house content, and house a system for socializing and matchmaking to help support the growth of the field. This is all going on kind of behind the scenes and, if, and we can show you some mock-ups and prototypes and Steve and folks at the registration desk can set up times for you to look at that if you're interested. But we're developing this, this process and this, and this platform to support this growth as a field, to make it transformative but to also make it very voluntary and to have it open to the world. We're hoping to have an initial launch here pretty close to the end of the year. We keep saying the end of the year. <laughs> it keeps getting closer. And the development team goes, oh. So we're excited about this. We are very, very excited about it. We think that this, this is a potential game changer, not only for UDL as a whole, but for education and all the partners that we have uh, in education to support the growth and implementation of UDL and to get it where it should be, which is the core of education practice, right? At the core of education practice. Because for those of us who go out and support the implementation of UDL or support research around UDL or support personnel development around UDL, what we know and what we understand, it is the foundation by which we operate. You could stack other things on top of it. You could stack personalized learning. You can stack equity-based initiatives. You can stack RTI, MTSS. You could do all these things, but it's stacked on top of a broad foundational framework of UDL. And that's what's represented in the platform we are developing. Great. So uh, we felt a need to have an online presence. Um, and we struggled a bit because uh, naming this the Universal Design for Learning Credentialing and Certification Initiative is a mouthful. So uh, we're referring to it as UDLCCI or CCI. Uh, website is udlcci.org. Think of this website as kind of a public service announcement. Um, just to reference or reflect on what's happening in the field, I got a ping this morning in the email, in my email that. Um, 
The Association for Supervision and Curriculum Development, ASCD, which is a general ed uh, society association, in their uh, April, I think it's April 17th uh, edition of Educational Leadership, is all about learner variability. I did a quick scan out of 13 articles in the upcoming ver uh, ed edition of Educational Leadership. Seven of them reference UDL as a core foundational element to getting things done. So uh, there's more detail available at uh, the udlcci.org website. There's also a listserv. I wanted to create, as Jamie mentioned yesterday, some sort of vehicle for convening. Uh, so feel free to sign up for that listserv. And what we'll start doing is pushing out information. If there are aspects of this that you want to get, uh, be involved in and specifically kept up to date on, let us know. I will respond uh, via that listserv because it sends a question that you may have likely is shared by someone else. So the more folks that hear the questions and we can start a dialogue, uh, that would be just terrific. So this is your opportunity as well to kind of give us feedback. Um, the team uh, in developing this over the last week, both CAST and the IRN kind of came together to develop a quick survey. Um, you're gonna not only receive this today, but we'll send it out afterwards as well and it's gonna go on the CCI website. The URL is right there, and it says UDL IRN survey, but it's really a UDL survey um, to talk about credentialing and certification. It's gonna, give you, it's gonna give you an opportunity to give us some initial input and some thoughts about it, as well as to uh, ask some, uh, there's some places where you can actually list some questions and such in there as well. All right, so again, you're gonna receive this here today. Obviously, you have access to it for the first time. You're the first group to go through it. Uh, but then we're, we're going to launch it and send it out over the CCI listserv and website, et cetera. So we hope you have a great day. We hope you're as excited about this as we are. We are really, really excited about it. This has been in the works for a long time. And we, again, think this could be a game changer. We really appreciate you guys listening to us. And yeah. Thank you very there much. There we go.